Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to another lesson. In this lesson, we are going to do an IELTS listening test part 3 questions 21 to 30. Please note that the answers are in my pinned comment. Are you ready to begin the test? Success, everyone. Now, let's begin the test. Section 3. You will hear a conversation between a science tutor and two first-year students who are being given some practical tips for conducting experiments. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Now, Vincent and Tessa, I've asked the two of you to come and see me because I'm a bit concerned after that incident in the science lab last week. I realise that neither of you have had much experience in a laboratory before. Well, we mostly just study theory at high school. And we rarely got the opportunity to carry out any experiments. Fair enough. But we must all abide by certain safety procedures. The last thing we want is for one of our students to get hurt. We understand that. Our priority is to make sure that the chemistry laboratory is a safe place. And actually, accidents can easily be prevented if you just think about what you're doing at all times. It sounds simple enough. It is if you always use good judgment, observe safety rules, and follow directions. We've read the rules on the poster inside the lab. And yet last week you were seen working in the lab without eye protection. What do you mean? I was wearing my glasses. Prescription glasses are not safety glasses. You must always wear the goggles provided. You'll find they fit quite comfortably over your ordinary glasses. Oh, I see. Just make a habit of putting them on before you start and keep them on until you are finished. And another thing, never eat or drink while in the laboratory. What? Not even water? Not even water. At least not until after clean-up. Then be sure to wash your hands thoroughly with soap and hot water and dry them on a clean towel first. And Tessa, your hair should be tied back when you're in the lab. It's not that long. Still, it poses a hazard when you're working with chemicals or a naked flame. If you can't tie it back or pin it up, see if you can tuck it into a cap or something. Yes, I can do that. Thank you. Now, Vincent, last week you wore a t-shirt and trainers in the lab. The rules clearly state that long-sleeved shirts and leather shoes must be worn. Oh, yes, I remember. I was late getting back from sports practice and I didn't have time to change. Well, it mustn't happen again. OK, I'll see that it doesn't. Good. As for the rest of the safety precautions, refer to the safety poster inside the lab and you shouldn't have any problems. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. Now, before you go, a word about record keeping. Oh, good. I was going to ask you about that. What's the best way to keep track of what we're doing in the lab? Well, obviously, all your observations should be written down. I know you think you won't forget stuff and you'll be able to recall it later, but generally this turns out not to be the case. Written data, however, are a permanent record, and you must be thorough. Organise and record everything in a bound notebook. 
I use a spiral notebook. And I use a large notepad. That won't do. A book with binding ensures the pages are not easily removed or lost. Oh, and be sure to write your entries in complete sentences. Isn't that a waste of time? Surely notes are good enough. You might think so. But brief notes can be hard to decipher at a later date. Whereas with full sentences, you are less likely to misinterpret data. I make sketches, you know, simple drawings. That's a good idea, Vincent, but be sure to date them. You want us to write the date next to each drawing? Yes. Every sketch and every entry must be dated. What about headings? Use the title of the experiment as your first entry. When you have completed your observation entries, answer any questions that have been posed, and then, finally, write your conclusion. How do we write a conclusion? Do we need to repeat things like the questions and our findings, or the time it all took? Just write your own ideas or feelings about the experiment as the conclusion. Oh, and remember to sign it. Well, that's all I have time for today. If you have any questions, ask the lab assistant or come back to me. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.